All right, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be uh, designing the data schema uh, that we're going to use in the Grade Recorder app. So first question, the good question to ask is, what are the actual entities that we're, that we're dealing with here? And actually, we have an app that, that obviously, because I, I showed you a run of it, it's pretty well defined already. Uh, and you can you can pick most of them actually right even even off the the, the nav bar here. Um, so what do we have, right? So so certainly one entity we're going to have is a course, right? So we have we have certain uh, instances of courses that we have. Uh, we're going to have assignments, right? So assignments themselves uh, are going to be associated with a course, right? So we have an example here of, of a few different assignments within the, the, the Android course, right? Uh, courses also have students in them, right? So here, here are the students uh, that, are, um, that, are, that are taking Android at the time. Uh, and courses also have owners. Now this, this might make uh, might be a little bit you know unintuitive. So f it's probably pretty clear that, that, that owners have courses, right? When I log in, I have a certain number of courses that I'm associated with. Um, but we actually have, have the, the ability for a course to have multiple owners. And basically that's anyone who has edit permissions to, to the course. Uh, really handy for us as professors uh, because we often have teaching assistants that, that are also uh, enabled to, to enter in grades uh, for student projects as well, right? So, um, so we want that ability there, right? And then what we're not seeing here, but of course, which is that which is sort of most important uh, since this is a grade recording app, is that we need um, some sort of idea of individual grade entries, right? So what we have is, is an example um, of showing three different entries here, uh, all related to, to one assignment. It turns out these guys right here were all for lab one. Okay. Um, so the, those are the entities that I have in, in my app. And again, the, the main idea, courses, assignments, students, owners, and then finally grade entries. Okay, okay. so again, the, the, the next question comes up is, is how are these different entries related? We know that each one of them is going to have to be a path in Firebase, uh, but how are we going to sort of navigate even in Firebase between one and the other? So let's talk about that right now. Uh, you've actually done some similar things when we've been uh, dealing with, with past data um, in Firebase in some of our previous apps. So for instance, uh, you know, weather picks, we had something that we had a whole bunch of picks, um, but they had you know, different owners that, that created them, right? Uh, but a little bit more complex here. So first of all, let's let's think about this, right? So a course, um, a course has assignments certainly. So I could maybe they have an, an arrow going in the, in this direction right here, right? And we would say that that essentially each course, so one course, have multiple assignments, right? But each assignment again is is just associated with a single course, right? Kind of kind of makes sense, right? So Android has Lab One, Lab Two, Lab Three, and so on, and some exams and projects and all that stuff. Uh, likewise, uh, students um, are associated with a single course. Now, this was a design decision we, we made. We recognized that, that you could have, um, you could choose to model students uniquely in a, in a student taking multiple courses, but we don't have, as a professor at least, we don't really care about, about a student being able to see their grades or anything like that for multiple courses. We just care about our own course, right? So as far as we're concerned, um, you know, if I have a course that has a student in it, uh, if someone else has another course that has that same student, we don't mind those those being totally independent of each other. There's no uh, no idea of sort of linking those. So one course, okay, it has multiple students who are in it. Okay, uh, grade entries are are interesting, right? So a grade entry, if you think about it, so an an individual grade is a grade for a student, right? So a student certainly has a grade entry for each assignment, right? So one student has multiple grade entries and each one is associated with a single student. Uh, likewise, an assignment, so lab one, has a lot of grade entries associated with it. In fact, that's how we navigate into the grade entries. We click on the, on the, the assignment and it brings us into a page that has all the entries. Okay, so if I go down here, I'd, I'd think about one assignment having multiple grade entries, each grade entry uh, associated with a single assignment. Right. Uh, so that's the idea here. Uh, but And you know, if we think about how many of each, well, well, good so far, this sort of one-to-many relationship is what we've seen in our previous apps. But there's something new with this one. All right. As you mentioned, we have this whole idea that, that, uh, that an owner 
Okay, so if I log in as a specific user, that an owner has courses, right? So every owner uh, has a whole bunch of courses. But the converse is also true, right? Any course that we have, because of this idea of assistance also having edit permissions, a course has multiple owners. And this is new to the work that we've done in Firebase so far. Sort of this idea that, that you can have this, this two-way relationship. Uh, and that's going to make our queries a bit more complex. Uh, it's going to, to make the data model a bit more complex as well. Uh, so, so we're going to have kind of some, some interesting issues that come up here. And, and I'd like to, to uh, you know, go through some of this with you. And that's, that's really the purpose of, of this, this whole uh, unit. Yeah. All right, so remember this picture, um, a really key. All right, so moving on. Uh, how are we going to model this relationship here, you know, an assignment being associated with a course? Uh, the typical way to do this is to have uh, model objects that have other objects' keys, right? So here's, here's a sample code snippet from the project, right? So we have an assignment. Uh, and assignments, of course, can be compared to each other because, you know, we want to be able to sort them alphabetically. Uh, and we got something to, to just sort of, you know, keep track of the, the path in Firebase. And you know what you might expect, you know, sort of each each object has its own key, um, you know, and, and we would expect assignments to have, you know, some sort of maximum grade that a student can earn on it um, and, you know, sort of a, the name of the assignment. But this is the new thing right here, right, is that the um, the assignments also keep track of which course they're associated with. Right. So we have two keys. One is is uh, this assignment's own key, but then also there's this course key right here that's associated with. Okay. We're going to be able to use that in queries, so so very very handy. Um, everything else out here is, the, I guess, there's nothing new, but that's really the 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 key key idea here. Yeah. All right, uh, how are they going to be stored in Firebase? I um, mean, you can imagine, right, with the 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 code that we just saw right here, that this is going to be pretty straightforward to model in in Firebase. We're going to have the three fields and then one ignored because it's it's already going to be there in Firebase. Uh, so we see under the assignments path. All right, we see that, that we had a whole bunch of assignments here. Uh, I've, I've opened up two of them. So this one right here, um, one particular assignment, so the fruit finder assignment uh, has a maximum grade of 100, and it's associated with a specific course, right? And again, it details that course right now, doesn't so much matter, it, it turns out it's the image recognition course. But you see sort of how it ends here. And you notice that that's different from this one right here, right? So this lab one right here is actually associated with the Android course, all right? So each assignment has a way to, to sort of determine which, which course it's, it's part of. All right, um, next thing is that, you know, whenever you're setting up uh, data in Firebase, you should also use Firebase rules. Um, you know, we use them to contr control access, uh, but you also wanna use them to validate the data model, right? So the kind of rules that, that we'd, we would want would be these kind of rules right here, which are doing a whole lot of validation, right? Um, validating that all the data is of the specific type. Okay, uh, it's pretty error prone to to write all your rules in in JSON, and like we mentioned in the previous unit, right? So the the other way to do this is to use Bolt. All right, so let's take a look at what the Bolt rules would look like for this, and particularly just for the assignment. All right, so setting up in, in Bolt, I mean, yeah, the, the very very much nicer syntax. Let's let's take take a look here. Right? So I started off. And Bolt has a syntax for declaring types. So basically, each model object is going to get its own type in, um, in Firebase. Uh, so we have an assignment type, and it has three things that are associated with it. Again, no, no surprise here, right? So it has a course key, a max grade, and then a name. These are the same exact names that I had in my model object and in the Firebase. Uh, and then the types of those, right? So it turns out so name is a string. Uh, max grade is, well, it's a number. It turns out I wanted it to be a number that was non-negative for a maximum grade. So I actually declared another type right there. So max grade, uh, can it, you can have types that extend to other types. So this, this right here is just a particular type of number in which we do some validation to make sure that that current value uh, is non-negative. Okay. Uh, and I, and I'd, I'd say check out Bolt if you're interested in how these are made. They, they have some pretty straightforward rules for doing this. Okay. Uh, the course key itself, um, I wrote type key here, and I really should have put, put uh, this on the slide, but basically type key extends string, right? So key is really just another name for string and no additional validation um, as far as what I wanted. It was just a, for a little bit better documentation, right? That, that That's a certain type, okay? So that's one thing. Uh, so once I've declared types, 
and then I want to say that a certain path conforms to that type. So let's go back to, to look at this path again. Um, so back up here, so this is within the assignments path. Um, I have a whole bunch of assignments within here, uh, and those are all that, that object. So what I can say is that uh, within the path, so slash assignments, okay, starting at the root, and then each of the assignments that are in there, okay, and again, they, so the, the curly braces in Bolt are kind of like the, the dollar sign uh, in, in the JSON rules, right? So this is, this is used for a variable. So basically saying that, that on that path, every assignment that's in there is of type a capital A assignment, which was this type that I uh, declared right here. Okay, so very, very easy to do, very straightforward. Uh, we'll take a look at, at compiling them, and I think we'll actually wait and talk about how to compile them until we actually do it on our starting code. So let me skip, skip past here. Uh, and in fact, that's what we got coming next. Um, so so when, when we come back, we're gonna check out the starting code um, and we'll see that everything's there. It's pretty much done, eh, other than grade entry, right? But that'll be for the lab. All right, talk to you later. Mm -hmm.